Welcome back to another episode of Generation Strength Teaches You Things. Yep. I've uh, got Chris Bridgeford, Branson Lee, Brian Kane, uh, Amber Dawn is part of this team, but she's not here today. So taking the day off. We're going to go ahead and move forward. Uh, we're going to get into deadlift, mobility, and stability. So let's go over a few things here. Conventional. Conventional. Yep. Next week will be, be sumo. sumo. It'll be a so two part series. All our deadlift stuff will be two part. One part for conventional, one part for sumo. They are different and they matter. So we'll get you the conventional part today and next week come back for sumo. All right, what's up everybody? So today uh, we're gonna start with some uh, soft tissue release work and some pre-movement uh, prep drills to allow, you, uh, to allow you to open up your hips a little bit and get you closer and closer to your bar for uh, training the deadlift. So I'm gonna have Ranton uh, uh, demonstrate a TFL release, uh, a soft tissue release uh, geared towards the TFL with a kettlebell here. He's gonna get up and he's gonna get into a 90-90 uh, sitting position or a, or a, a Z sit, uh, there's a couple different terms for this. Uh, so he's gonna try to, as you can see here, he's about 90-90 uh, or Z sit, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna be targeting this, uh, we're gonna be targeting this back leg here and we're gonna be going for this TFL right here, which sits right on the front of the hip. And uh, generally for people that spend a lot of time sitting down during the day, uh, the TFL can get pretty tight and it can inhibit our ability to externally rotate and extend the hip, which are both pretty important for the conventional deadlift. So all I'm gonna have Ransom do here is he's gonna take this kettlebell and usually about uh, 20, you know, 20 to 15 pounds uh, is gonna do enough work here as this is a pretty, uh, pretty aggressive uh, soft tissue release. So all I'm gonna, fun. yeah. So I'm the gonna smaller, add, real, just real quick, the smaller people use the smaller ones too. Yeah. It depends on your size. Yeah. If you're, uh, if you're not Ransom size or my size, you know, if you're uh, under 200 pounds, I'd say you could definitely get away with using a smaller kettlebell on this. So. All I'm gonna have Ransom do here is we're gonna take this kettlebell and we're gonna flip it upside down. And he is going to hold it right on the front of the hip here. He's gonna find, he's gonna find that TFL right on the hip, <clears throat> right on the front of the hip. He's actually gonna hold the kettlebell. And what we're gonna do here once we have, and that's an, another important thing to note before I move on to the next step is the angle of the kettlebell. The angle of the kettlebell is angled so that way it's uh, going directly into the hip joint itself. He doesn't have it angled up too high or too low. It's angled directly at uh, the hip joint. So uh, once he has the kettlebell settled in here, he's going to start to lean back nice and slow. So this is sort of almost like a pin and stretch type movement. So we've, we've pinned down the muscle, we've found a nasty spot. So now we're gonna lean back and we're gonna to try to get more of a stretch in there. We're gonna keep this hip down on the ground. <laughs> and we're gonna turn to the we? Yeah. <laughs> so as you can see, it's not, not a very comfortable movement. No. Nope. And we're gonna re repeat that process a few times. <clears throat> He's gonna pin down the TFL. He'll lean back, get a good stretch for about 20 to 30 seconds. And then he'll start to leverage his torso back into the hip and back into the kettlebell I mean, and try to lower that lower that back leg uh, hip as close to the floor as possible. And he's just gonna repeat that process a few times and then he'll go over to the other hip. This, this is gonna hurt. Yeah, like not, watch his face when he's doing it. Don't be like put off by that. It's not it's, fun. It's not fun, but it's, <laughs> it's not gonna kill you. It's not even gonna hurt you. It's just gonna feel painful. No, it's gonna hurt you. Well, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not very comfortable. <laughs> Some, sometimes, honestly, when I, when, I give this, when I give this to clients and they're in their pre-training prep, I will honestly have them do it with a partner yes. or I'll perform it for, for them just because it's a lot easier to do so. And yeah, there we go, on to the next one. All right, guys, next move we're gonna show you today is going to be a piriformis stretch with a banded hip distraction. Mm -hmm. uh, this is one of my personal favorites to do pre-squats and deadlifts. Uh, that's another thing to note that I did not point out that uh, a lot of the a lot of the movements that we posted in our uh, our pre-squat series as well as uh, our pre-deadlift series today are applicable to both. So some of the movements that we posted for pre-squats and a lot of the ones that you're going to see here are going to work really well for each other. So it's going to give you a lot of variety as to what you uh, choose to do before you decide to get under the barbell or to pick pick up the barbell. So I'm going to have Ransom get down on the floor here and head facing this way. Nope. 
head facing with, yep, there we go, but you're going to be on your back. So head facing, so turn this way. Ah! If I get even with the band, right? We're going to back up a little bit more. First part of this movement is going to be the banded hip distraction. So we're going to get that band looped up high and as high as close to the hip socket as possible. We are, pull, we are pulling that hip joint inferior, right? We're pulling it closer to the feet. And then the second part of this is going to be targeting the piriformis and all the other deeper external rotators uh, in the hip. So what we want to do here in order to do that is what I'm going to have Ransom do here. He's laying flat on his back, right? We want to make sure that the pelvis is tucked, right? We're not arching through the lower back when we're performing this movement. Pelvis is tucked. Ribs are down, control breathing in through the nose, out through the mouth. What we're going to do here is we're going to take this, we're going to figure four. We're going to get that heel up close uh, close to the knee. And all we're going to do here is Ransom's going to take this left hand and he's going to put it on the right hip, on the right ankle. And he's going to slowly lower this knee to his left side. And he's going to try to keep this right shoulder in contact with the floor the whole time. Something that will help with this is, is if he just gradually looks to his right as he pulls this down. And we're going to get to a solid 7 or 8 out of 10 here. We're going to hold that for about 15 to 20 seconds while keeping a good breathing pattern going. And then we'll come back up. We'll reset and we'll go through that same cycle again one or two more times. Nice, nice and slow, controlled breathing. Look the opposite direction. Let's feel that deep in your glute. Yeah, so like I said, we're targeting the piriformis here and all the other deeper external rotators in the hip that often get neglected. Like we focus on glute max, glute knee, TFL a lot. We forget that there's a lot of other external rotators involved in the hip there. So it's important to not, to not neglect those. And like I said, this is one of my favorite movements to, uh, to target the piriformis, whether you're gonna be squatting or deadlifting. So the next thing we're going to be going over is a isolated adductor stretch. Uh, so Chris is going to demonstrate this for us. So first he's going to get this kind of on his knees, put his hands in front of him, and this like out. So his torso is, is nice and pretty much over this right leg here. Uh, big thing, you know, is keep neutral pelvis, not tucking, not rounding, keep everything nice flat here. Um, so for this, since this is going to be more for a conventional deadlift, we're going to be targeting the hamstring. So in this position, Chris is going to push backwards towards his heel with his hands. And as he does so, this leg, he's going to rotate his foot, his toes upward, so that he's on his heel. Doing this is going to put a lot more emphasis on his hamstrings here uh, than the inside of his thigh and his adductors. So if you kept your foot on the ground, it would be a lot more adductor uh, prominent, which is going to be better for sumo. But for here, it's just going for conventional target hamstrings. So push uh, backward, roll the foot up onto the heel. Now, as he's doing this, you want to look uh, at the side here and make sure your back's not rounding. So as he comes back, he's keeping his back straight and his lower back nice and flat. If you see the lower back starting to round as you come back, then you notice there's going to be something else with mobility that needs to be addressed through the hips. Uh, so there's other work to be done. So go back as far as you can to where your low back is not rounding, and then stop and let it stretch for a minute, and then come back up. Repeat that probably three or four times to each side, and the hamstrings will be nice and activated to go. All right, guys, so we're going to be moving into uh, the stability uh, portion of our movement prep series here for the conventional deadlift. <clears throat> Another personal favorite of mine is going to be the kettlebell suitcase deadlift. So this is really going to be focused around the obliques and the lats and the roll in stabilizing the spine in the deadlift. So two really, really, really important muscles when we're talking about having a really good looking conventional deadlift. So. What I'm going to have Rance to do here is he's going to stand, uh, he's going to stand next to a kettlebell here and he's going to assume as normal of a conventional deadlift start position 
uh, as he would, as if he was like approaching an actual barbell. So he's going to get down into position here. He's going to grab his kettlebell and he's going to hold. Yeah, he's going to hold this bottom position for a second. He's really, really focusing on depressing this scapula, getting as close to his butt as possible, getting good shoulder extension here to ensure that we're getting this lat turned on. Can you feel that in your lat? Yep. Good. Another thing that we're focusing on here is anti-rotation. So Ranson is fighting the urge to twist his body this way. He is holding position here, which means we're firing this opposite side oblique, right? And this is gonna, like I said, this is the main focus of this exercise. This left oblique and this right lat and vice versa if he was going to do the other side. So what we're gonna actually do here is we're gonna go through about five really slow and controlled reps. He's gonna hold that bottom position Get that shoulder extended and packed down, and he's gonna go through normal range of motion. Big thing here with this exercise is to keep control the eccentric. I like a good three to five second eccentric on these as a warm up. He's gonna go through this nice and slow and controlled. He's holding position the entire time. Nice controlled dead stop rep. Gonna come back up. Good. And he's gonna do the same thing on the other side. A lot of times we'll notice that one side is going to feel a little bit more difficult than the other. For me personally, I've got a lot of old injuries on this left side from college wrestling, so my left side is a lot more difficult to train than my right side. So I will spend more time on my left side than my right side. So this is going to be something that's highly individual. One lap might not turn on the same as the other. One oblique might feel weaker than the other. For the individual, it's going to be important that you focus on a side that feels weaker but also that you're training both sides. So that's a kettlebell suitcase deadlift, one of my personal favorite warm-ups for the conventional deadlift. All right, what's up, everybody? Hi. <laughs> All right, so we are going to show you a forward-banded conventional deadlift here. Um, there's multiple ways you can set bands up. If you don't have band pegs, you can just loop a band around the middle, attach to a heavy dumbbell. Uh, in front of you or have a partner hold the band for you yep uh, i've seen a lot of people do this movement having a band pull at the wrist as well uh, i personally don't notice a huge difference between setting it up uh among, like on the wrist or on the outside of the barbell or on the center of the barbell it all feels the same to me and it's all going towards the same purpose of using your lats and the deadlift yeah i agree with that as well um so what we're going to do we're going to get some bands like you use the mini bands and put them forward pulling on you. So what this is going to do is help with activation of the lats here. Um, so the lats are going to be the biggest also controlling how your bar path in deadlift here. So Chris is going to come down like he's deadlifting and you want to create tension with these bands. So you're fighting the urge for this bar to pull away from you the entire time. So you're pulling it into you get a lot of tension, and then coming up like you're rolling little death lift. Keep in mind, it's not about overloading tension on the bands either. Mm -hmm. you're, you're doing this for a purpose, and it's not the ego lift. No. It's to warm up properly. So don't be, don't be trying to put a giant monster band on there. Just get good tension on there to engage your lats. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> you don't need a whole ton of tension for this to work and activate you properly. Just needs to be a little, little bit of tension, enough to where you have to fight it the entire way through, but not enough to where it's pulling you forward to where you can't keep the bar close to you at all, because that's just counterproductive. Yeah. That's all I was going to add in. If I'm standing so far back with this amount of band tension, where I'm here, I'm clearly leaning back the entire time to try to keep the bar close to my body, and the movement I'm doing is not resembling anything close to my actual conventional deadlift. We're either standing too far away from where the, uh, where the bands start to tension when we pull the bar into our body, or we're just using too much, too heavy of a band. So we want, when we're pushing up, we still want the amount of uh, force that we're pushing into the floor to be coming from our midfoot. There might be a little bit more uh, perception of feeling like you're pushing off your heels, that's okay. As long as you're not over exaggerating leaning back and that the, the bar path is still pretty much coming up in a straight line. We're not coming back like this due to the amount of band tension that we have on the bar. So, yeah. 
So like, <coughs> you can video, I would honestly, if, if this is new to you, and anything, because most everybody videos their main lifts, video these things. If you feel like something's wrong, video it. Because if you see yourself doing it, you'll be able to pinpoint it versus trying to just feel it out. So if you if, if any of these warm-ups are confusing to you, video yourself doing it, compare it to what Chris or Ranson's doing, and then go from there. Got it. Yeah. Yep. Run through it one more time. Yep. We're here. Uh, so that cue, the cues we talked about where people say, uh, like, put, put your shoulder in your back pocket or, uh, you know, anti-shrug, these other cues that you hear us and other coaches talk about. This is a great drill to reflect that because what I am doing here is I am – driving my shoulders down closer to my butt to keep that bar close to my body. So here, driving my shoulders down. Shoulder here. Yep, my shoulder, my shoulders are in a flex position. My shoulders are extended and I'm, de I'm depressing my shoulders down to my butt. In a good deadlift start position, I'm driving over midfoot. I'm keeping the bar close to my body. And I'm controlling the eccentric. All right. The last movement of today's uh, movement prep series for the conventional deadlift is going to be the GHD hip or back extension, uh, depending on how you like to word it. I just call it a hip extension because that's what we're focusing on. We're not actually focusing on trying to overextend our lower back through the movement, which is pretty common to see when I see people performing this. So. I'm going to have Ranson set up here. He's going to make sure that the pad is set up directly even uh, with the top of his hip. That way, we're not overloading the hamstrings. We're getting a nice even distribution from the low back, glutes, and the hamstrings with the pad being set higher. If he has it set too low, there's going to be a lot of work coming directly from the hamstrings and less from the glutes and the lower back. So what Ranson's going to do here is he's going to start at the top from a neutral position, right? He's not overextended through the spine here, right? We wanna, do. we wanna do our best to replicate what we're doing with the conventional deadlift, and we're not gonna be overextending like that at the top of a conventional deadlift. So, he's sitting here at the top, neutral spine, he has his ribs packed down, right? He's trying, he's doing his best to haul out his core here and try to almost suck his gut in. I tell people to imagine to try to push your belly button to your spine, All right? That's what we're trying to do here at the top. He's going to slowly lower himself down here while maintaining a neutral spine the entire time, right? He's going to pause here at the bottom. He's going to initiate the movement here by driving the back, by driving his heel into the pad here. He's not going to start the movement from his lower back. He's going to start the movement from his glutes and his hamstrings. So he's going to drive his heel into the pad here. He's going to come up nice and slow. And he's going to keep that spine neutral the whole time. Keep those ribs packed down. He's going to hold this top position for a second. And he's going to come back down nice and controlled again, keeping everything neutral. One more time. Come up nice and slow and controlled. He's going to stop neutral. Everything's contracting here nicely. So there we go. One of my personal favorites for teaching control at the midline and improving uh, a lifter's hip hinge. Uh, which is obviously really important for the conventional deadlift as, as it is a hip hinge movement. So there you go, the GHD back extension. Thanks for coming around for some conventional mobility stability information. Uh, next week, we'll go over sumo. Yep. Uh, probably a little more needed. Is that fair to say? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. 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 sumo is all about that mobility. And if you, you don't got that... <laughs> Really? Mobile? Yeah, I don't like sumo. I don't like sumo either, anyways. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thanks for coming by. Like, subscribe, what's all that stuff? Yeah, like, subscribe, comment. Yeah, comment. Something like that. Share. Yeah, comment. Leave us some cool questions. Share it on your MySpace page. Yeah, your MySpace. Get Tom involved. We want that top eight. Anyways, thanks again, guys. Yep. We'll catch you next week.